how did I get in the Air Force? Um, Civil Air Patrol was really responsible for that. I didn't, you know, find Civil Air Patrol. My brother did, and he was 18 months older, and I felt left out. So um, I joined CAP. But Civil Air Patrol wasn't the only thing that fed it. When we were growing up, we didn't go to circuses. We we went to air shows. So it's. Uh, all that kind of came together and I, you know, I was a private pilot before I um, went on active duty. The funny thing was I, I, I filled out my dream sheet. I put down first choice student pilot, second choice student navigator. The guy at the personnel office said, ma'am, uh, women can't be pilots and navigators. I said, I'm very well aware of that. And he said, well, you can't put that there. I said, why not? I want the Air Force, if they decide they want to put women in pilot or navigator training, I want them to be able to look in the computer and pull up my name. I wanted to be go to pilot training, but they called me up, uh, the folks at the board, and they said, your vision's on the wrong side of the waiver limit. So uh, would you like to be a navigator? And um, I said, sure, you know, it's flying, you know. I had no idea what navigators did. I ended up finding out that NAV is pretty important. Uh, they were kind of the brains of the operation. I never felt like they didn't want us there. But um, I found out later that, you know, they had a lot of extra work because we were there. One of the poor um, uh, instructor NAVs had to call Washington every Friday morning. He had to get up at four and report how the women were doing. The, Classwork, celestial navigation, that, that was one fun deal. It just requires a lot of attention to detail. But what's weird is when you actually fly, you may not have many aids to help you. And you gotta pull a rabbit out of a hat. It's a weird position, you know, because because you're you're the thing is set up to be subservient. Now you're a woman, and no guy likes to take commands and stuff from a woman. And so um, you really have to work doubly hard to prove yourself. The wing commander, when I first met him, he said, we're, we're going to treat you just like one of the guys. And uh, he said, and we're going to keep the press away, you know, for the first year. And I said, that's great, you know, because I wanted to integrate into the uh, crew force. After the year, a TV reporter came with us. But the flying schedule that had been put out in advance had our crew, and in the comment section it said, David Moses, WPTZ TV. And some, one of the guys asked me, why is David Moses flying with your crew? I said, you know, girl nav? He said, oh, that? So um, I, I really felt very good about uh, the fact that, you know, they considered me so well integrated that they couldn't figure out why a reporter would be on my flight. When I was a pilot, I went to talk to a, a, a third grade class and the teacher says, we're going to have a visitor, a special visitor on Friday. And it's a woman, and she's a pilot in the Air Force. And one boy says, that's not right. She can't do that. It was fun to answer their questions. She said, they said, well, you know, why aren't you a teacher or a nurse? I said, I wanted to fly. That's why. But, you know, if you can't see it, you can't be it.